Well, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a look at something a little different from my regular PlayStation and PlayStation 2 Linux adventures. This cheap eBay H313 all winner X96Q Android TV box. So let's get this thing unpacked and see what you get for $40. Now, the box is, as you might imagine, it's a bit on the lower end of the unboxing experience. It's pretty cheap and doesn't feel very special in any way, but let's see what this thing comes with. To be honest, I actually thought this would be a lot bigger and way a little more than it does, but let's continue. Okay, so one basic power supply of very low quality, the plastic feels really cheap. One pretty short stock standard HDMI cable. One amazingly cheap feeling remote, uh, no batteries included. And an infrared receiver, which is kind of crappy in this day and age, but I remember these on my old uh, TV cards used to get. And finally, one of these direct from Chinese to English user manuals. These things are always quite funny. Uh, one of the features I noticed about this is that it's a quad-core ARM Cortex-A53 CPU. Now, this does support OpenGL and Vulkan 1.1. So this should be interesting. We'll have a look into that later on. But this just basically explains the ports, how to plug it in, how to turn it on, and all those kinds of things. Okay, so let's get the X96 out of the wrapper now. Shiny, flaky, feeling plastic. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's a $40 Android TV box. So it's not really going to be anything special. I didn't really expect it to be. There's all the standard ports there. It comes with this AV cord uh, jack at the back, but there's no cable for that. Which is kind of funny. I think I've got one laying around. And then you've got this little clip here. So that's so you can stick it to the back of your TV or monitor or wherever. Pretty cool. Let's get this thing connected and fired up. And as you might expect, it it's a pretty lackluster user interface. I did manage to get the Wi-Fi connected, but it didn't work for some reason. I kept having errors and all sorts. And when it finally did, it still didn't really want to work. So I tried Netflix just to see if it would uh, load up and the whole machine ended up freezing so you get to the loading screen and that's about it. Kind of disappointing for the first go but I'm not sure what's going on here. Hopefully this doesn't affect us later. So I found this thing on eBay and it's the 2 gigabyte RAM model with a 16 gigabyte ROM with uh, Android 10. I'm not so sure if it actually will be the 2 gigabyte uh, RAM model. So looking around here you can see uh, some of the features it has and you can get an 8 gigabyte model as well. So it's a quad core and it was manufactured in 2023. There's the H three one three Android ten claims to have four K. Curious about that. So there is a one gigabyte and a two gigabyte version. I have heard a lot of people say that when they get their boxes it's only the one gigabyte version. Before purchasing the X ninety six Q I did a little investigating around the Armbian forums and I found a lot of people had purchased this model and done a lot of the groundwork. So big thanks to all those people that went from this thing barely booting and no USB ports or Wi-Fi to making this a fully functional mate distribution of Armbian. 
A key issue with these boxes are there's so many different revisions and different configurations. So you've really got to go to this forum to find out what box you might have um, and what settings you'll need and which images you'll need that go for the DDR3 models or you know the 1.3, the 4 and the 5th generation versions of this box. Some of them are actually also fake. So you'll see here, here's one of these boxes and then there's another one just below it here that's completely different. Now they're the same but they're not the same. So it's really hard to tell from an eBay sale which one you're really buying. Um, but it's worth having a look on this forum to get a bit more information before you do buy it. And then all you need is an image. That's where Ballina Etcher comes in. So I just downloaded the available image on the forums there, put it onto a 32 gigabyte SD card, uh, SanDisk, and boom, it booted first go. And I was pretty happy. I was like, wow, because a lot of other people went through a lot of pain to get this working. And some of them only got to like the terminal or it would boot, but then there was no display. So you had users having to SSH via Ethernet to get into the box remotely and try and set it up and figure out what was going on with the drivers. So at this stage of the setup you put in your root password and then you go into your shell. And then you basically set up your uh, usernames and all that sort of stuff and passwords and all the regular things you would have in a Linux distro. But it's pretty cool that this happens out of the box. One of the cool features here was the fact that you could do Wi-Fi straight away and mine worked so that was kind of a relief compared to the experience I had in Android 10 which I will go back to eventually just to see what it functions like um, as a regular TV box but uh, it, it was kind of cool that it worked here so I don't know what's wrong with Android but I just could not get that thing to connect properly and when it did it just kept dropping out or it just wouldn't work It took a little while for this loading procedure to go through but when the mouse pointer finally showed up I got pretty excited because this doesn't happen in the Ambien community for a lot of people. They go through all the stress of having to use SSH or some other kind of technique to get into the system but everything worked here and I had sound and Wi-Fi and everything all going and you've always got to have NeoFetch when you get a new distribution running on a piece of hardware and this box is tiny and I'm pretty happy with the results here. Naturally I wanted to have a look at some of the specs here to confirm that some of the uh, claims the vendors have made actually match what we have so you can see that it is an ARM A53 Cortex processor running at 1.5 gigahertz quad core and that's pretty good but when it came to finding out how much RAM we actually had HTROP revealed that we only have 919 megabytes, which is kind of a shame because 2 gigabytes would have made this a really capable machine for what it is. So a little bit disappointed there, but kind of expected it to be that way anyway. The current resolution is not 4K, but that's something we can probably play around with to see if we can't push that a little further. Looking into the OpenGL side of things, you can see here we've got a Mali G31 Panfrost. Uh, I got Mesa 3.1, so we should be able to use Vulkan as well. And Vulkan Tools was not installed, so we'll, we'll put that on there. And it says here it's not supported, so we might have to install a driver if it's not already installed or not functioning properly. These are some of the settings for the uh, Ambient release here. Um, 64 SOC. All right, installing all the drivers. Oh, there you go. Mesa Vulcan drivers. There we go. This might help. So let's try and run VK Cube now. And hopefully, hey, hey. look at that. And that's pretty smooth. That is pretty smooth. So I think we need to get Super Tux Card on here or some other games to test this out. Super Tux Card. Now I didn't use the Vulkan command line flag 
and the graphics are set to high so it's I wanted to see what it would be like under stress and you can see here the frame rate is just terrible so I turn them down we turn on the Vulcan command line uh, flag and it's playable it's quite smooth kind of reminds me of PlayStation 1 or 2 graphics and it ran pretty well and like I don't know what the frame rate is here I didn't really bother to check it but it looks really good and it's quite playable it's quite responsive and everything you'd expect from um, sort of an Android device anyway not too bad so just for fun I thought hell let's throw on Olama and try out um, some stories just a small model and uh, it took a little while to install here but once it got going uh, it worked so let's try something out let's uh, write a little story here we'll just say hello first hello And that's quite decent. That is quite decent. The stories don't make any sense, but it does work. And that's going to do it for today's video, guys. I will do a follow-up video of some of the other things I find, and we might push this machine a little harder in the next video to see what else it can do, and, and if it's actually worth it. Might install some more apps, do some uh, internet exploring, and uh, see where this rabbit hole takes us. Thanks for watching.